in this part of the simulation what I want to do is I want to um, I have already developed a model um, as you saw earlier in the earlier um, numerical simulation that I defined a crack let's look at it I defined a crack and uh, a contour integral crack and I defined interface um, uh, a frictionless interface or uh, uh, for the crack faces so when we apply compressive load the crack faces do not overlap um, what I want to do now is I want to apply a cyclic tensile and compressive displacement the displacement is easier to simulate so compress tensile and compressive displacement to show you that uh, that how this crack interface uh, defined crack interface works we want to see the results by running a mechanical simulation so it is easier to um, analyze um, but um, in, in the in the future um, simulations what I want to show you is that how this thing connects better with thermomechanical um, the applied thermomechanical load with cooling where the crack is where the material is expanding and due to which the crack is up, up, and due to which the crack is opening up and then um, uh, due to heating the the material deforms plastically and due to that plastic deformation um, uh, when the material undergoes cooling there is um, th um, there is um, um, crack opening and due to that crack opening um, there are uh, there is energy release at the crack tip and then the uh, and then during the heating cycle the crack faces join up together again and there is a compressive load cycle and thing goes on um, in 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 that um, in uh, in that um, uh, tutorial or video I would also like to show you some results from my earlier publications um, because it is difficult to show in the simulation but it is easier to show nicely on the simulation uh, in, in the um, nicely summed up results which are presented in the publications uh, how this thing is happening but yeah uh, let's 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 start uh, what we what I want to do is um, quickly change the boundary conditions so initially what I have done is you see that I have applied uh, compressive uh, uh, displacement here on 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 this um, um, on this um, <laughs> surface um, what I want to do is I want to reduce uh, this uh, amount so let's reduce it to um, uh, one centimeter one e minus two um, and I want to change this amplitude basically this this amplitude controls the direction and the magnitude of um, the, the, the direction magnitude and basically the direction the vector of applied displacement this is what I want to change and let's change this amplitude so um, to we have total time of five seconds at zero amplitude is zero at 0 0.001 amplitude is let's say at one amplitude is one hmm? then so this will apply tensile load then at 2 amplitude is minus 1 then at 3 amplitude is 1 then at 4 amplitude is minus 1 then at 5 amplitude is again 0 hmm? um, so basically this will um, uh, this is a cyclic um, load where it will the first um, pull the surface in tension then will push the surface in compression of um, one centimeter then will pull the surface in tension then in compression then in tension then in compression and so we will see how this crack behaves under this kind of fatigue load um, um, I have changed the amplitude rest everything is same I defined the crack you 
you can see the previous videos to see how that is happening you can see the previous videos to see how to post process um, the energy release rate and other things on the crack phase we are just running this simulation to see the results crack in cyclic hmm and i want to run this simulation uh huh it is quite interesting uh huh what i want to do is i want to okay So uh, in the, in the, in the first second it is going under tensile load, so going in the positive y direction. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the results. Um, yes, so you can see under tensile loads I have applied tensile load here. So under tensile load the crack is opening up. Uh, we can see both faces of the crack. We can see a high stress concentration on the crack tip. Um, um, we can also uh, quickly look at the J integral here. Um, f for now, the simulation is running. I don't want to do that. But yeah, we can see that the more I am applying tension, the more the crack is opening up the stress concentration on the crack tip is increasing and probably this is the end of the frame okay so yeah so this is probably the end of the frame and now after this now in the, in the next second um, um, i have defined an amplitude such that it starts compressing it okay let's see from here okay so now uh, we are applying um, compressive displacement here on this frame and we can see it moving uh, under compression uh, because we have defined crack interface uh, what I am expecting is that when these cracks faces will come in contact they will not overlap and the um, uh, let's see how much plastic deformation we have so we have some plastic deformation at the crack tip due to which the tip will not um, undergo uh, compression uh, basically this will still keep open so crack tip opening displacement we will see the simulation is running it is a bit slow but yeah stress in in mesos is okay so we can see that uh, here the stresses are much much lower and on the crack tip the stresses are much higher and under compression the crack is closing hmm interesting uh, because the simulation is taking some time to complete um, I will pause the video here and we can look at the results when the simulation is finished hmm? so see you guys then simulation is about to uh, complete and we can see that there were some convergence issues not really the issues but um, it had to go a really small increment to um, converge the solution and it took quite some time i started the simulation at 16:33, so let's round it off to 16:30. it is already 20 minutes in and still running so you can see that the increment size is super super small here and um yeah it is now become small grows because of the um, cyclic fatigue load that we have applied and um yeah uh, but it uh, but i'm about to get the results uh, about to get the simulation completed um and this is also something which i want to teach in my tutorial how to look at the um, job monitor 
so in the log I can see that I submitted the file at this time and then the job started and everything is going okay there are no errors but there are certain warnings um, which I don't mind so they are basically about heat flux I have not applied any heat flux whereas I'm using couple temperature displacement um, simulation model you know why because eventually I want to go to um, um, a thermomechanical fatigue type kind of load um, therefore I'm using this but for now I'm just applying mechanical load in the output I can see that how many frames have been written for which step in the data file basically this is a very detailed file which contains all the J integral contours estimations and we will discuss it later um, when the job will be complete for now it is still going in the message centers we can see all the messages that have been generated for a certain error or for a certain thing and if to basically um, dissect the whole uh, messaging part this file is quite important um, the status file just shows um, which increment um, is now running for how many iterations were required and uh, for how much time um, it, it, it completed so basically this information is being also logged into the status file which can be um, checked later um, for now I'm only interested in the output file how many frames have been written and the log file when it will say that <laughs> the job is completed as you can see here so at 16 15 so almost 20 minutes three minutes less than 20 minutes the job finished um, my CPU performance dropped a bit and uh, yeah let's analyze the results okay so it is a certain frame let's go to the initial condition and I just want to see the um, animation of time history that how things went so first there will be a tens tension cycle let's say this and then there is compression um, cycle coming up and then we can see that there is an interface between the crack faces and they're not overlapping after the compression cycle there is a next tension cycle and okay so this tension cycle goes quite higher oh okay okay that was 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 really not expecting this but okay and then there is compression hmm hmm okay oh that was quite rough uh, the material has to <laughs> plastically deform to a very high degree and this is what I was not yeah th th this happens when when we are not very realistic okay the next tensile cycle is coming up and okay let's okay huh so basically that is what is happening and um, so basically I have defined a fatigue kind of load so tension compression tension compression and this is what is happening here and I can also derive XY data field output data uh, yeah I want to get out um, J integral I don't know how to it was specific for uh, no dismiss XY data history output yes and here in this history output I can plot this so you can see here contour 5 and we can see that this is the value of uh, energy release rate at the crack tip basically um, going in the tension then going in compression and then going in super tension and then going in compression but not so much and then going in tension again coming in compression and then going in tension again so um, this is the J integral um, energy release rate value which is quite high for this kind of um, um, 
material but yeah uh, if you want to see that how these things are post processed then you can look at my previous um, uh, um, uh, simulation videos but uh, yeah this is the next step of um, defining a J and contour integral crack uh, and then assigning uh, basically the crack interface uh, the crack face interface uh, which is quite important in the case of thermomechanical load or the fatigue load when there is compressive loading or compressive residual stresses involved and um, yeah for all those things you can go back and look at the videos which i have uploaded earlier and yeah um, this was the final step uh, the basically mechanical uh, by applying mechanical load which i wanted to show and now in the in the next uh, videos what i want to do is i want to show you uh, take a real example of, of uh, something which i have already published or i'm working on and want to show you a complicated case of how thermomechanical load is applied in in with cooling and how that affects the crack uh, crack propagation or crack behavior um, in in such case and now you know how that whole thing is defined so this was a simple case and there are probably more complicated cases with more complicated problems so yeah um, if you are done with this then you are good to go for the next phase and I hope you enjoyed the video and yeah just keep watching and keep learning and if you have any comments uh, write down the comments so I can um, help you with that also important point is that I am I, I believe that I am really good with these kind of simulations so contour integral uh, crack um, definition and then the thermomechanical um, load application and then looking at the crack behavior under those thermomechanical loadings if you have any opportunities if you want to collaborate or you want to discuss something uh, i am i will be very happy to um, to do challenging things with people having challenging jobs and yeah just catch up um, thank you very much and see you in the next video